My name is Megan Ely. I'm with OFD Consulting, which is a wedding PR and marketing firm in Richmond, Virginia. I'm also a NACE thought leader here today. So, first I want to tell you about the time in 2011 when I bought a fruitcake. More specifically, I commissioned a gold fondant fruitcake from a British cake maker, the only one in Richmond, Virginia, with a picture of Prince William and his bride-to-be on top of it. Um, I don't know if you guys heard, but they had a little bit of something called the wedding of the century. And so being a wedding professional, my due diligence, I had a party at 4 o'clock in the morning with all of my about 35, 40 wedding professionals in my living room. And so the beauty about a fruitcake, I don't know if anyone actually eats fruitcake, but but you can actually order it like months ahead and then serve it to your people. Like no one will ever know the difference. I did not exercise that right, but I went ahead and I ordered it two weeks in advance. And being a PR girl, I knew that the media cycle was going to start jumping on this story, like crazy person host, crazy early party. And so I did a little photo shoot with the local newspaper and I started taking pictures. Actually, I took this picture just with my cell phone and I started tweeting. So picture of my awesome cake, picture of all my you know, crafts from Michael's with my cake, me with my cake, hashtag royal wedding viewing party, hashtag royal wedding, hashtag I love Prince William, things like that. Um, and so within an hour, the Huffington Post had called my personal cell and said, we want to cover your story. And soon that just started to, it was a media snowball. And within a week and a half, I had Good Morning America in my living room, no lie, 3 o'clock in the morning, much to my husband's astonishment, a poor guy, covering my party for the West Coast Feast. Which, true story, all because it started from there. And so that was 2011, and I have to think back to 2001. I actually studied um, public relations at James Madison University. Go Dukes! Sorry, yeah, it's obligatory. We just do it, we find each other. And so, <laughs> and so back in the day, all the professors agreed on the same thing, that in order to connect with the media, you would send out what was called a press release. Most of you guys have probably seen it. One page announces something newsworthy about your company. Who, what, when, where, and why, couple of fake quotes, company bio, out. You used to fax or mail it, and then now, of course, email it. But the fact of the matter is now, public relations has changed tremendously in the last five years, which is why we call it the new press release today. Now we're having an enlarged conversation with the media. And one of the reasons I'm up here speaking on it today is I get phone calls and emails from wedding pros every week saying, my good friends are all getting covered and getting picked up, or my competitors are the ones being quoted all the time. What in the world? Same thing every time. Big difference, they're putting themselves out there and you're not. So the goal for the next seven and minutes and 15 seconds is to cover some of these things and empower you to give you some ideas about how you can get your name out there above and beyond the press release. First, social media. I know you've heard it a million times already. This is where you want to connect with the media, guys. Instagram, Twitter, the editors are there. They're posting things that they love to talk about. It's, you know, public relations, always people associate it with a bullhorn because we're talking. Public relations is active listening, paying attention. We have unprecedented access to journalists now. Ten years ago, if I needed someone's contact information, I ran to the Barnes & Noble, I grabbed their information in a magazine, opened it up, prayed to the PR gods that their email would be in there, otherwise I'd have to call, which horrified me. Now, I know what they had for breakfast. I know what they had for dinner. Case in point, on the left, that's Lauren Grove, every last detail. On the right, that's Carly Roney from The Knot. Now I know what they had for breakfast. Active listening, paying attention, what are the things they're covering, what is it that interests them, and how can you fit yourself into the equation? Get on Instagram, get on Twitter, start following media that you want to target. That's what you've got to do. One thing you've got to do before you leave here today. Ask yourself, what do I know? What do I know? I know weddings. What else do I know? Pay attention to those journalists. See what they're covering. See what they're not covering that would complement what they're doing already and try and squeeze your way in there. Case in point, Wedding Planner Magazine, hope you guys saw them I'm down at the exhibits. They do an industry magazine for, for wedding planners. I was paying attention to Beth Online, who's the editor-in-chief. I said, Beth, love what you're doing. I understand your audience is wedding planners. I see a lot of people intimidated by Indian weddings and notice you haven't covered it. What do you think? I've got a lot of contacts, yada, yada, yada. She picks it up, it's gonna be actually in the next issue, I believe, that comes on. Not this recent one, but the one after that. I paid attention, I knew Indian weddings, I knew people who knew it, and I tried to fill in, 
fill in the blanks for them as well. Also, what's my story? Keep in mind that your story could very be very impactful to readership. Um, once I got picked up because my story was I graduated, I spent a year in AmeriCorps, even though all my family was like, don't do it, like go in corporate America. Um, they thought I'd fall behind, and I didn't jokes on them, and that became a story in the local paper. Keeping in mind that your story could be impactful. So start thinking, what, kind, what can I give to the media? What are things that I can contribute? Next, time to pitch. Stick to their beat. You find a journalist that you want to pitch, you better make sure they are covering it. I don't care if you've got a friend in the sports department, don't pitch them the top winning trends of 2015. They're just going to toss it. Take the time to look at the media outlets and see who the contacts are. And I'm going to give you a really great program in a few minutes to help you with that. Make sure you're pitching relevant content. Keep it brief. I have, I do it by email. Over 90% of media folks say, pitch it to me via email. I have a formula. Subject line, story idea or article pitch, something very transparent. Dear, use their name. Use the correct name, guys. Don't, especially if you're multiple pitching. First paragraph, introduce yourself. My name is, I'm with this con company, I am contacting you today because I have an article that would be impactful to your readership. Push on that immediate, let them know how it's important. Then two to three lines, tell them what the story idea is. When I wrote Beth, I said, you know, I, it was very clear with her and I said, this is what we would cover and these are some things and I feel if people were more empowered and educated about Indian weddings, they'd feel more confident to take them. And then in the third paragraph, offer resources. Journalists, media, freelance writers, everybody, constantly on a deadline. Always on a deadline. Give them, make it as easy as possible for them. Tell them how you can help with the story. If it's appropriate, offer to write it, which is what I do if it's appropriate. Tell them who you can connect them with to help fill in the blanks for the story. Offer them professional images. That's what I did with Beth. Again, I contacted her and said, I represent the Big Fat Indian Wedding. We, she'd be a great resource. She also has a number of venues, planners, floors that we can chat with. I have high resolution professional images you're welcome to use as well. Close it up by thanking them for their consideration and then go ahead and include all your contact information. They will email you, they'll almost never call you. So go ahead and do that. Favorite tools, Haro, who uses Haro? Help a reporter out, yeah, I love Haro. Google it, help a reporter out. It connects journalists with experts. We're all experts at something. It's a free tool. Sign up for it today. It's the best thing you could do for PR. You get Monday through Friday, normal business hours, normal business days, you get three emails. And what they'll do is connect you with anything from 20 to 40 different media outlets looking to interview for specific things. I've connected with the New York Times that way. We were on the CBS Early Show because of it. Um, I have two clients who have regular gigs with the Green Bride Guide because of it and SheFinds.com. Really great resource. Two bright lights. Fantastic for real wedding submissions. Hopefully you guys got to see Rebecca Crumley and Siri talk about it. If you're into, which, man, I could talk for an hour and a half about real wedding submissions, but if you have to learn one thing from me today, join Two Bright Lights. It streamlines it and allows you to upload images and pitch them out. Um, if you're not the photographer, you have to work with the photographer for it, but I log in every day for the last four and a half years, and I use Two Bright Lights. It's worth its weight in gold. Buzzstream. This is my new baby. Buzzstream, it's like 10 bucks a month or something. And what it does is you sign up and it collects your media list. Start collecting names of journalists that you want to pitch. It's fantastic. And so what you do, sign up for it. Gives you kind of like a pin it button. So if you go to a site, let's say you're on Glamour and you want to maybe pitch something fashion-y, wedding fashion-y. You go on, see who's writing it. You kind of like pin it with their little Buzzstream. And what it does is it collects information about the site, analytics, pulls the contact information if they can find it on the site for the journalist, and it gives you all their recent articles. It's gold, it's wonderful, I use it every single day, and it's very reasonable. Leo Burnett, advertising guru, I use him for almost all of my, you know, when it comes to quotes. He said, if you don't get noticed, you don't have anything. You just have to be noticed. But the art is getting noticed naturally, without screaming, or without tricks. And that's what I wanted to tell you today. Public relations does not have to be the old school with the press releases and you're shouting at the media. Consider it an enlarged conversation now. It's something that we can all do. Just figure out who you want to target, what you're an expert at, and then just go for it. And if you don't hear from it, you know, go for somebody else and keep submitting. You can do it.